All right, let's get back to this EGR system. So first thing I'm gonna do is start up the car. Just pump up my vacuum pump that's connected right to the EGR valve. Make sure that works, that it stalls out. Most likely it does. You can even pump it up right now and then release it. You can hear that the valve is moving. Then we'll connect our vacuum gauge, tee it in to the vacuum supply line to the valve and then just drive it and see if the vacuum is excessive when we're you know under medium medium throttle see if there's a problem with this uh, little vacuum modulator which is supposed to meter the vacuum to the EGR valve when the system is enabled and that's based on your throttle opening the load of the engine and also the exhaust back pressure there's a hose that comes to the bottom of the modulator right here that's connected to this uh, port right at the EGR valve. We can pop off the modulator and just double check it, but let's, uh, before touching or um, disturbing anything, I want to do the test drive with our vacuum gauge plugged in. So let's start up the car. Okay, car is running, pump up the EGR valve, stalls right out. So that valve is working just fine. Let's tee in the gauge, go for a test drive. So I thought, you know what, instead of using an old school vacuum gauge that you can barely see on the windshield, we have the PHAD pressure transducer. This is a perfect application. Uh, one huge benefit is you can save the live data and then present it to the customer, have it for your own reference. Instead of just looking at an analog needle, that's only real time. You can't record that data. That's a huge advantage of using a scope and a transducer. So we have a 265 PSI transducer, and this one is actually very accurate. It measures all the way down to vacuum, up to um, almost 300 PSI. So transducer is on. There's a little adapter that's teed into our EGR valve. So on the Pico, I did make some new custom scales. So if we go to our probes, we want to see either PSI map, inches of mercury, inches of mercury vacuum. Let's, uh, let's pick that one. So you're at zero right now, and when we're in vacuum, you know, that's perfect vacuum, it's 28. Engine vacuum is about minus 20 inches of mercury, and we'll see if this EGR valve is being pulled way too open or not. You can already see some activity on the EGR valve the actuator. Let me give it a little throttle. There you go. That's pretty neat. So the system's working. And I want to see if that, you know, under medium throttle, if that vacuum is excessive. It means we're getting too much EGR flow. Okay, so we've got a capture, kind of medium throttle acceleration up to 3,000 RPM. And you can see the vacuum supplied to the EGR uh, valve is slowly increasing, only to four inches of mercury. So not not that much. So the car again, it's a very very light maybe a little surge. It's hard to reproduce and the car is always accelerating so you have to slow down and start over. Um, we could go up the mountain but that requires more you know full throttle. It's a pretty steep grade so the EGR might not even be active there. We need a kind of a constant not too steep of a grade to test this system out. So what I want to do is now pinch off the uh, the vacuum line and see you know go up the grade here like 45 miles an hour and see if uh, there's absolutely no surge and we, re we can repeat that um, with the valve or with the line unpinched to see what happens. So with the vacuum line pinched off, basically no noticeable difference. I think it occurs at a very specific load, long grade, a <laughs> very specific angle. So you give the car back to the customer, you know, just with, I mean, the car is not perfect, you know, the wheels are a little shaky, 
the rattles and the axles are worn out so all these vibrations kind of mask what the customer complaint may be <laughs> I mean, if you can't reproduce it, it's kind of a spinning your wheels but I, I really don't think that the EGR system has anything to do with anything there's no real surge that I can feel even going up uh, you know that grade at 50 miles an hour we could take it up the mountain see if it does anything weird but so <clears throat> went up the mountain and tried to keep the car you know overdrive off in that zone where the EGR valve is as open as it can be just judging by the vacuum supply to that valve so yeah there's a little bit of something there we'll try to do it again it's, it's really hard to keep it in that zone so I decided to take the Celica on one more test drive because, you know, I hate giving the car back to the customer with, with no clear answer. So I took it out on a straighter, you know, road with rollers where you can keep up 55, 60 miles an hour and going up, up the little grades, it, over the wheel hop, I even rotated the tires so the little bent wheels in the back you could feel a little surge, not a smooth, you know, Toyota butter smooth power band. So I did the same route with the EGR line pitched off. Perfect. I mean, it like gained 20 horsepower right in that sweet spot at 2,000 to 2,500 RPM under, you know, like half throttle. Uh, no more surging amazing just smooth butter smooth acceleration so the customer I know is going to be very pleased about that the question is why is the OEM EGR system making the car drivability you know it's, it's affecting it uh, I checked everything in the system everything is stock OEM fine you know the vacuum tr little transducer or the vacuum modulator Everything's fine. You saw in the scope that the vacuum was not excessive. So I think the only the only thing left here is the spring, the return spring in the actual EGR valve might be getting a little weak. I mean, it lives right in the engine, has hot exhaust gases passing through it over 25 years and 230,000 miles. I think that spring got a little weak and the valve is just opening a little too far under that modulated vacuum. That's my only hypothesis and no, this car is not getting a new EGR valve. We're just disabling it and it's gonna drive even better than with a new valve. The customer, obviously, you know, it's kind of a budget car. He's like, you know, whatever it takes to make the car drive fine, I don't, I'm not worried about the, there's no emissions inspections or anything. So I think we're just gonna Lock off that vacuum line and there's a no parts required fix to make the car drivability so much nicer. Real world solutions. <laughs> I mean, uh, what, what else can you do on a 25 year old beater Toyota? So I think we'll leave it at that. Maybe for the bonus footage I'll show you the final repair. But that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. So I think my theory with the EGR valve return spring being too weak is right on point. So this is uh, from the test drive when we're going up the steeper mountain. So about four inches of mercury is uh, you know about where the vacuum modulator likes to keep that vacuum to raise the EGR valve to open it up. So let's do that with a manual gauge and just listen to the valve and see what's the threshold. When does it open, when does it open fully, and when does it close. So let's just run the scope. So now my vacuum gauge is hooked up instead of you know the car source. So I'm just going to raise this and we're going to look at the scope. The 
right about there is four inches of vacuum. The gauge is fairly accurate, about five inches of vacuum. I'm going to slowly release it. You guys hear that? So that EGR valve, by the time you get to four inches of mercury, is fully open. You can hear it hit the upper limit right there, before four inches of mercury. So anytime it's the vacuum is below that, that EGR valve is fully open. That's way too much. That means that modulated vacuum is you know, it's trying to keep it somewhere in that range. That's the whole point of the modulator. Uh, you know, in more modern cars with EGR valves, you have a potentiometer and like a stepper motor driving it. It's very a lot more precise. But in this case, this thing is so easy to open. To open, so anytime it sees the vacuum modulator starting to give it vacuum, it's like pop, pop open. You get the surging. Just too much EGR flow, and then. It shuts off and uh, you get much nicer power. So the, the fix here is basically either leave this line off, you can cap it off, but this is uh, pinch it off, whatever you got to do to make this thing stay closed. Drivability will be drastically improved, no parts required, it's an old car. And that's it. So thanks all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. By the way, here's the reason for the annoying tire hop. I'll just set the camera up and... You see from the side. Boom, boom, boom. These tires are warmed up. They all have a massive unroundness. This one's even worse. <laughs> Terrible. Let's see what brand are these? So people can avoid these in the future. Oh, these are master crafts. The other ones are Sumitomo, I think. Touring garbage, just pure garbage tires. So I'm gonna tell the customer, if he wants a smooth ride, get some decent tires.